The following video is another free preview from my online course about manual metering. It's only one of over 45 videos on the complete course. If you like what you see here, please consider taking a look at the course to see if it might be a good fit for you. But either way, enjoy the video. When shooting film, especially at really long shutter speeds, there's a phenomenon you're likely to run into called reciprocity failure. And reciprocity failure is something you have to correct for, otherwise your exposures come out all wrong. So let's take a look at it. So reciprocity failure is a failure of the normal reciprocal relationship between shutter speed and aperture, causing an error in exposure. All right, I know that sounds kind of complicated, so let's break it down. So when you meter for an exposure, there are a variety of shutter speeds and apertures that would yield the same exposure. So like on the Pentax digital spot meter, it actually shows you all of them side by side. So for instance, let's say I'm metered up right now um, in such a way that I could use f2.8 at 1 8th of a second. Well, I can see on my barrel here, I could also use f4 at 1 4th of a second, f5.6 at 1 half of a second, f8 at 1 second, f11 at 2 seconds, f16 at 4 seconds, so on and so on. It's got a bunch of different equivalent exposure settings. And what we're seeing there is that reciprocal relationship. All that means is as you add light on one of them, you can take away light on the other and they cancel each other out. You take away light here, add light there, they cancel each other out. So if I take away one stop of light on the aperture, I just have to add one stop of light on the shutter and I get a mathematically perfectly equivalent exposure. And that reciprocal relationship mostly works. But when you get into really long exposures of like multiple seconds, many films, that reciprocal relationship starts to break down on them. And suddenly, 2.8 at 1 8th is not the same as 32 at 15 seconds. It's more like 32 at 30 seconds or 32 at one minute. Like you have to actually use a longer shutter speed than the reciprocal relationship would uh, dictate. So that's reciprocity failure. And we have to correct for it, otherwise our exposures come out underexposed. So reciprocity failure occurs with especially long and extremely short shutter speeds. So multiple seconds, multiple minutes, that's when reciprocity failure really rears its ugly head. But it can also happen at extremely short shutter speeds. One four thousandth of a second, one eight thousandth of a second, those kinds of shutter speeds. That's much less common. Most modern films can handle quick shutter speeds no problem, but the longer shutter speeds definitely are still an issue. So let's concentrate on the long exposures. But whatever the case, compensation must be made by adjusting exposure from your metered settings. Generally, you have to add exposure to what your meter is suggesting. And the adjustment guidelines can be found in film data sheets or with an app. So film data sheets, uh, you can find these online. They're usually PDFs. You just go to Google, type in your film, Kodak Portra 400, film data sheet. And then you'll find a PDF that has a lot of data about it. One section on that film data sheet is usually how to adjust for reciprocity failure. But there's also apps, uh, which is very convenient. I use an app called Reciprocity Timer. And it's a piece of cake to use. You put in your film that you're using. You put in the uh, exposure time that you've metered. And then it tells you if you need to go longer than that. It's a great app. Super easy to use. There's other ones out there, but I use Reciprocity Timer. And reciprocity failure can also cause a color shift. Uh, primarily in color reversal film is where it's a big problem because you can't really correct color as easily after processing on color reversal film, but on print film you can usually correct that afterwards. But it can cause a color shift. So like Velvia, for instance, I think shifts towards like a magenta color when you do really long exposures. Uh, but you can correct for that as well using filters. So let's look at a film data sheet. So I went to Google, I just typed in uh, Fuji Velvia 50 uh, film data sheet and found a PDF, free download. And within that, there's a tiny section called long exposure compensation. And you'll see it says no exposure correction or color balance compensation is required for exposures within a shutter speed range of 1 4,000th of a second to one second. So that means as long as your shutter speed is between one second and 1 4,000th, you don't have to worry about reciprocity failure. The film will work normally as expected just fine. And it goes on to say, however, for exposures of four seconds or longer, reciprocity law failure 
related color balance and exposure compensations are required. And it's got this nice little table here. So for instance, it says, you know, if you're using, uh, if you have a metered exposure time of say 16 seconds, you have to add two thirds of a stop to your exposure. You can do that with the aperture or you can do it with the shutter. It also has color compensating filter 10M. They make color correction filters, CC filters, color compensating filters as they're also called. Um, you use a 10M and that'll take care of the color cast that you get from uh, reciprocity failure. So it's a pretty simple thing to correct for. You just have to add more exposure, um, but you do have to be aware of it. So basically I know roughly uh, on the, my most commonly used films at what point reciprocity failure becomes a problem. But generally speaking, if I'm using a shutter speed of one second or longer, I like to check my app just to make sure there's no reciprocity failure beyond one second um, because you really don't want to forget that. Otherwise your exposure comes out way underexposed. So that's reciprocity failure. See you in the next video. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you in class.